All right, so I truly believe that the number one thing that stops people from making good work is resistance. And resistance is the little speed bumps and roadblocks that you run into when you're trying to make something or build a new habit, whether it's going to the gym, trying to eat better, etc. So in this video, we're gonna be reviewing ZBrush for iPad, but we're gonna take a little bit of a different approach. Before we get started, let me just give you a quick demo of what that is. There's dirt everywhere, and it's too bright. I can't see the screen. There's dirt everywhere, and I can't see the screen. That's okay. This is good B-roll, I guess. So here's the app. Here's the thing. I'm recording on the thing, and I can go to my sculpts, and I'm just gonna quickly demonstrate the first thing I made on this app. So this is a dragon that I made on the plane while I was traveling to Camp MoGraph. So it, given the fact that it's on an iPad, you can pretty much be mobile with it anywhere. This has 8 million polygons, so performance is not really that big of an issue. If you go too crazy and I'm on a four-year-old iPad right now, you're probably gonna run into issues. It may not be as fast as the desktop if you're really throwing like 120 million polygons, but any 3D software will choke at that regardless. So the fact that on a four-year-old iPad I can have 8 million polygons is pretty legit. So you have all your basic brushes down here. These are the brushes that are just the standard, what are most used in all of ZBrush. I'm on the paid version right now and no one gave me money to make this video, but I'm making it because uh, I have some things I wanna say. Um, on the free version, there are not all of these brushes. You are given some basic ones, but I do have the paid version. You have pretty much all of the main brushes that you would need on ZBrush if you wanted to do any of the sculpting things. You have your cloth stuff, you have some hard surface tools, which we'll get to in a second. So all your brushes are gonna be down here. You have your tools like Z Remesher, you have your tools like Sculptures Pro and Dynamesh. If you've never used ZBrush before, it's basically ZBrush for desktop light, as in you have most of the features and not all of them are there because as far as I understand, it's really hard to make an app. So because they're trying to basically remake it on mobile, they have to rethink a lot of things. And if you've used ZBrush for desktop before, the UI is something to be desired, but the uh, just iPad version is a lot easier to manage with all these cool little palettes and menus and like customization that we can do. So long story short, from a like user functionality as someone, I am personally not someone who identifies as originally a digital sculptor and an artist, but I have a lot of fun using this tool because it dramatically reduces the amount of resistance that I need to actually practice my skill. Now, when I say that it doesn't have all the tools, for example, we don't have Z Modeler. If you're familiar with ZBrush before, it's basically the hard surface tools, the ability to manipulate our polygons on a point edge or uh, polygon level. But for basic sculpting things, like being able to like take a mesh and turn off my wireframe, add some go some stuff and just start sculpting, it is super easy to go ahead and dive in. If you'd like me to do a quick crash course tutorial and to get started on this, let me know, but I just need to say something. So let's go back to the resistance point I made earlier. What I mean by resistance is when you have those little speed bumps and roadblocks that stop you from practicing a new skill, building a new habit, etc. it makes it hard. I get it. The reason why we're filming this video in my garage is because I actually struggle with a lot of fitness things. If you've seen any of my videos before, you might like, I say that the protein thing at the end of all my videos, I like fitness stuff, but I didn't start that way. I keep a squat rack in my possession or some sort of exercise apparatus around me at all times. And it's very important that I go to the gym because if I have a lot of resistance to go to the gym, I will not do it. So having something like this tool where I can bring it pretty much anywhere and have the ability to work on stuff that I can use in my actual client work for money, as in I make money doing 3D art for people and video stuff like you watch now, if that resistance is lower, I'm gonna be so much more excited for that. And I'm willing to pay personally for a gym membership or I've had powerlifting coaches and bodybuilding coaches because I want to reduce the as many barriers as possible to hopefully achieve my goals. Now, how you spend your time is totally up to you. 
I prefer powerlifting and bodybuilding. That's just the sport I do. Now let's, gonna, let's just go ahead and address the elephant in the room. ZBrush for desktop and ZBrush for iPad, they cost money. They're now a subscription. And I have some friends who've been ZBrush users for a very, very long time, and I love them very, very much. And they've expressed some dissatisfaction and um, disappointment with pr prices raising, license change. I was never part of that. I've never experienced that part of ZBrush. I got into ZBrush very recently, like a year ago. Now, I get that's annoying. I have been playing the game World of Warcraft for 20 years, since like 20, 2004, that is when I started playing that game. And that game has a $15 per month subscription. And that $15 per month subscription, like I've had times where I've quit and I've stopped playing. And then there's also been times where I continue to play and I play a lot. And the amount of time that I would sit there playing that game is worth that $15. It's not like an hour once a month. That's like going to lunch. That's like going to Chipotle. I've sat on that game for literally logged in time more than two years. I have lost two years of my life on World of Warcraft. Now, I'm not saying you should go ahead and lose two years of your life using ZBrush or d doing anything. Like th That is a significant amount of time if you really think about it. But World of Warcraft is a premium MMO game experience. And in World of Warcraft, you can do mount collecting, raids, PvP, role play on Moonguard if that's how you swing. I don't, well, however you want to play World of Warcraft is pretty much up to you if that's how you like to spend your time. I'm sure you can go do anything else. You can go on a hike. You can go play other games. Now, the reason why I bring up World of Warcraft is because it has a subscription service in the same way that ZBrush for iPad does. Now, ZBrush for iPad is, I believe, $12 a month at the time of this recording. I don't know what it is at whenever you're watching this, but there are other games out there that are not World of Warcraft that are not a subscription service. Those games, I'm going to use League of Legends as an example. League of Legends is a free-to-play MOBA game where there's one game mode, one game mode that's actually supported and everything else is kind of fluffy and just eh, eh. But you don't get the complete game. It's not just free-to-play. There are microtransactions, and those microtransactions those microtransactions include skins, if you remember from way back in the day, if you're an OG player, that also included runes, in-game currency, just little things here and there if you wanted the complete experience. On top of that, League of Legends has a cycling of different heroes, so you, it's, it's constantly changing versus World of Warcraft. It's like, it's constantly updated, but you can kind of choose how you play. So the reason why I make this video game analogy is because I believe that we are looking at software incorrectly. I wanted to make this video to explain one thing, and that is we look at how we spend our time versus how we spend our money incorrectly. And I, I know making money is challenging, especially in today's day and age. And if you don't think something is gonna be a good investment for you, then don't buy it. But I'm, I don't think it's worth yucking someone's yum because something costs money. Because, hey, someone might get a lot of enjoyment out of this thing and it might lead to something amazing for them where they find a new passion, they find a new career, they find a new side hustle. I don't know what that is. Like, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not a 3D sculptor or 3D modeler professionally. I make video content and that includes modeling sometimes, but I'm, this is not my main thing. And what I need to say is that reducing resistance to try stuff, I think is more important than fixating on like the subscription service. Like go and subscribe to Disney Plus for a month maybe, and you can try something new. I'm not all for going hard mode, hustle mode, despite what a lot of people believe, but like this is fun. And I, I just wanted to share that because like, I'm gonna be honest, this is kind of curing my depression. We're not gonna get into why. Like, got a haircut, new things. We're not gonna go as to why why, why, why Jags is sad, but um, boy, it's a lot better than getting into substances. I, it's, it's better to get into substance painter, but not substances. And it's a lot better to do this than anything else. And I would rather channel that energy into something and when the resistance is super low, that's helping me a lot. I'm spending a lot of time on this app now 
and just kind of fumbling around because it is so much better for me than sitting down, watching TikTok, watching Instagram Reels. It, that stuff makes me irate in nowadays. I don't have a good relationship with social media. This is fixing part of that. And uh, I just wanted to share that because the way you channel your energy is very important because it can really contribute how happy you will be ultimately be. So, okay, rant over. I hope you enjoyed this little, um, there's, there's a freaking, can you hear that? Do you mind Los Angeles? God, I can't wait to move out of here. What I'm ultimately trying to say, and this is gonna sound a little counterintuitive, choose the path of least resistance to the hard thing. This is the hard thing. Learning ZBrush is hard. I will admit that, it is very hard. But uh, channeling your energy into something that you think will actually help you in the future versus just like sitting there watching TikTok and Instagram will be so much better for your mental health. And as someone who's going through some sad shit, focus that energy in a good spot. It's helping me. Hope this helps someone else. If you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever else, comment section is down there for that. And uh, I'll leave you with the final tip, one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Goodbye, my friends. Bye.